Well, hi, this is Burns Hargis for another edition of Inside OSU, and with me is Dr. Stephen McKeever, who is the Vice President of Research and Technology Transfer. Steve, good morning. Good morning, Burns. What How a are day. You? A beautiful day. Well, we're standing here in front of the Henry Bellman uh, Research Center, Interdisciplinary Research Center, right. uh, which is a fabulous facility that uh, was just finished. Yes. under your leadership. Thank you for your work on that. Oh, you're welcome. You know, I might make just a point uh, about Henry Bellman before we start. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, that may have been your idea. Uh, I'd like to claim it as mine, but uh, but who's ever... Uh, it was Joe Weaver's, actually. Okay, we'll give Joe Weaver credit for that. But Henry Bellman, of course, was a former governor, former United States senator, uh, legislator, first Republican governor in the history of the state of Oklahoma. Uh, war hero, won the Silver Star on Iwo Jima, uh, and of course is an alum of Oklahoma State University right. and was always a strong promoter of research and technology in our state. He was a mentor and a hero of mine, and so I'm very proud that Henry Bellman's name is uh, on this magnificent facility. Well, we want to see what's going on inside this great building because I know it's kind of unique in the sense that it's interdisciplinary. Yes, and that was one of the main design features for the building. Now that's, a, what, what does that really mean to the average person? It means that we want different disciplines to interact on some of the complex problems that we're dealing with today. So we might have scientists from arts and sciences and Absolutely. agriculture you might and get engineering. someone from physics interacting with someone from microbiology on a, a problem that requires both aspects. Yeah, which after all is the way the real world works. Absolutely. Things like sustainability, for example, yes. in Bob, probably every college on this campus. Yes, it does. Well, great. Well, let's go inside and have a look. All right. Well, Steve, here we are in the lobby of the beautiful Henry Bellman Interdisciplinary Research Center. That's kind of a mouthful. Yeah. And I see we're right by Newton's A Quick Stop Cafe. That's right. Uh, what a great name, too. Yeah, Na yeah. Named after as, Isaac as Newton. Sir Isaac. Yeah, That's indeed. right. Yeah, isn't he a Brit? Uh, uh, I'm afraid he uh, was. Yeah, I figured you'd put that, yeah. But this building is a secure building. The labs are restricted access, but where we're stood at the moment is the only public access in the whole building. Well, let's go look at a lab. You bet. Well, Steve, we're in one of the labs here at the Bellman Research Center. Uh, this is very impressive, but before we talk about this particular lab and what's going on, what else is in this building? The whole building is occupied by scientists from physics, chemistry, microbiology, uh, agriculture, geology, many different disciplines. Well, let's look, uh, let's look around the lab a little bit, and I see one of our more distinguished scientists down there at the end of the All right, let's walk down. This is what we call the core facility. Many instruments are far too expensive for any individual scientist to be able to afford for his or her lab. So we have facilities that are shared between many. But in order to run them, they're very complex, you need experts. And one of the experts is here, Dr. Dr. Peter Hoyt. Dr. Peter Hoyt. President Hargis, pleasure to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Uh, gee, this is very impressive. Turn, turn around here so the camera can see you. And I, uh, you might give a little of your background. You, you, uh, we won't say it out loud, but you actually went uh, got your doctorate at the University of Texas? Is that uh, the right? Texas and Medical Branch in Galveston, yeah. right. I got my PhD in genetics and cell biology, and uh, then I spent 16 years at the Oak Ridge National Which Laboratory. Which is one of the most uh, important labs in America. Yeah, well, it was where they had the most mice, and I was doing a lot of mouse genetics. I see. Time. Well, before we talk about this particular instrument and what's going on, tell me what this means to a scientist like you, because I've heard these are very important facilities. Uh, this is an amazing facility. We've always been over in the biochemistry department, and but we've always had these instruments which we wanted to be available to the university-wide uh, research community. Uh, now here we have a much greater visibility, we have many more interactions with people from different disciplines, and uh, I, I, I feel like our roles are kind of twofold. One, we want to save money to our research community because we want them to be able to come in and use these instruments without having to purchase them themselves or spend their own grant money. Right, right. And then the other is we want to be enablers. Uh, when they have a new idea or a new technology, uh, we want to be able to come in and try and set that up for them, give them a place where they can test new things using the expensive instruments that we have. You know, one of our most distinguished alums is uh, John Niblack, who has a scholars mm -hmm. program here right. at OSU, mm -hmm. uh, which is very successful. 
But uh, uh, John Niblack was uh, head of all research for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals, as you may know. Yeah. And actually, when he toured this building, said this this place. He said, "I've been all over the world, and there, I haven't seen five facilities like this." Yeah. Is that your experience? Uh, absolutely. Um, when we got here, and we were allowed to do some of our own design, uh, we we definitely designed this with what I consider to be state of the art. Uh, uh, capabilities. Speaking of which, let, let's talk about this mission. Before we got started, uh, you, you gave me a quick tutorial, but I'm not quite ready to get in the driver's seat yet. Okay. Well, um, here, I'll this walk is, around over here. This is a microarraying instrument. Um, they've been around for a while, and their role is to actually print DNA sequences, which represent genes, onto microscope slides that have a specially coated surface. Um, in this case, we can print the entire human genome three times on each one of these slides. And we do it by dipping into a DNA sample and then just printing uh, by touching the pins down. And then, then what do you do with it? What's, what's well, that? the next step then is once you have all those genes onto a chip, you would take RNA from a cell, give it a fluorescence label, and slap it down on there. And then you can That's see a which technical term, slap it down. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then that, then you can see which genes are being expressed because the RNA is, is only made by genes that are being transcribed. And you look at a normal and like a cancer cell, you can compare the two differences in the patterns from the genes that are being expressed and see the differences between normal and cancer gene expression. Well, well, obviously the Bellman Research Center is uh, another example of the incredible things going on on this campus. Oh, and, it's just fabulous. Uh, it, it really is fabulous, and uh, it, it all, it'll do a lot for OSU, a lot for the state of Oklahoma, wow. and probably the world. Well, I, so thank I hope you. so. So for Dr. Peter Hoyt and Vice President Steve McKeever, uh, this is Burns Hargis saying that's another edition of Inside OSU. We'll see you next time.